Welcome to Darkest Dungeon. This is Rantry, and I have loved this game for a long time, but they just came out with the new uh, Radiant mode, and uh, before it was a little uh, grindy, as it were, uh, but uh, apparently with the new Radiant mode, it's still hard, it's still deadly, uh, but the grinding and the time it takes to complete have been uh, reduced thanks to some changes to the economy and various other things. So we are going to try out Radiant Mode. Uh, I've already played a couple of weeks in here, uh, just in the Radiant Mode, just to um, just to check it out and make sure you know it was working and everything. But we'll get rid of that and we'll start a new one, Radiant, and we'll name this. Uh, uh, Radiant YouTube and uh, I, this isn't gonna really be a tutorial type uh, thing I'm not gonna explain all the minutia of the game and everything but we will be talking about strategies and party comps and combat strategies and stuff like that but the basics of the game uh, I probably won't cover too much um, and uh, here I'm gonna edit in the uh, intro sequence and if you have not seen that, I suggest highly that you watch it. It's brilliantly animated, but I'll put an annotation so you can skip it as well if you would prefer. Here we go. Ruin has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I've bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside, leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. All right, and this is the tutorial part. Uh, first things first, we're going to 
Uh, where are my options? Gameplay, tutorials off. Save that. Uh, can we just get back to the game? Return to the game. Uh, usually everything is procedurally generated. But uh, this Perhaps little tutorial area off. and the first uh, the first dungeon are set in stone. That all may hear of your arrival. So we're just going to bleed them out a little bit. And yeah, this is just teaching you how to play the game a little bit. Obviously, you kind of have your skills down here. You can choose uh, the best one for the job. Give them no quarter. Get some loot. Look at our map. These are kind of hallways and you go through hallways to get to uh, to get to rooms. This is a curio of some sort. It's a tent. Loot it. A handsome reward for a task and well performed. They, uh, I believe that they leave nothing unchecked. They and added back in uh, hunger checks in in radiant mode. The, originally, when it first An released, ambush. they took it out. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner. All right, has Wayne returned, June. The rightful right. owner they has returned. Um. So I would like to kill this guy first, but I don't have damage projection uh, to the back row. As you can see here by the little dots, I can't hit any of the uh, position three or four red uh, dots with any of my Crusader skills. The Highwayman can, but then I'm going to be splitting my damage. So actually, to be most effective in this fight, I'm just going to have to wear this guy down uh, with damage. Alternatively, and probably uh, better Lee. Yes, better Lee. Uh, I should stun him. He's got a 50% stun chance. This is 100, so it's kind of a 50-50. Ah, part of me just wants to do damage to him, though. I think I am just going to go with straight damage instead of uh, stunning him. Just for this time. Normally, you will have... And I could do damage projection back here, and but uh, I want to stack bleed on this guy because just because of the limited party comp. Obviously, we got to kill. We're going to have to kill this guy first. And I want to minimize the damage coming in, so I want to kill him as fast as I can. But normally, I'd want to kill the backliners first, because obvious... Uh-oh. Point-blank shot. That can be... That can do quite a bit of damage. Um, uh, uh, sometimes, but... A lot of times in the backline here, you'll have uh, stress damage dealers. These little bars under here uh, indicate your stress, and the red one's obviously your health. But stress is much more difficult to heal, and it's permanent. Uh, well, it's not permanent, but it it uh, sticks around after a dungeon, and your heroes stay stressed when they go back to town. So, uh, but they gain all their health back uh, if you successfully complete a dungeon. But they don't heal all their stress if you successfully complete a dungeon. That's what I mean by uh, permanent. But you can do various things to heal uh, their stress in town and uh, and while going through the dungeon, but. Stress damage is much more dangerous than uh, than f uh, physical damage, and there are less ways to heal it in combat. Uh, this chest is trapped because it's always trapped. Like I said, the tutorial in the first dungeon are not procedurally generated, so that's trapped. So I'm not going to take it. We'll just head to the town with our lovely, lovely loot. And a few uh, heirlooms, which we'll use to upgrade our town. And he got Demonomania. That's not great, but it's not terrible. Does Renald... I find that uh, Renald always has uh, Kleptomania as one of his starting little quirks. Welcome home. And uh, that sucks. This yeah, he's always a kleptomaniac, and I'm fairly certain that They're that is going to get locked in, and, you are and I won't be them. able to heal it. Uh, just real quick, these these are positive quirks, these are negative quirks. Some of them are not too bad, some of them are terribly bad. Kleptomaniac is one of the worst, because he'll steal stuff. Um, but we've got a stagecoach here, which is how we can get Women new and men, recruits, and, and we will uh, also be upgrading this first. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade it as much as I can because I want to have four uh, heroes to choose from every time I want to kind of start building out my party. Uh, I'm just gonna click on these to get the the uh, exclamation points off of them, but that's just the graveyard and this is where you can watch uh, the videos. 
as it were, but we're going to go ahead and just proceed straight on to the first little baby's first dungeon, uh, because it's all we can do. We don't have any trinkets, so we'll just provision. Uh, I'm going to take... Uh, I'm gonna take eight food just in case there is a uh, there's a check I don't know if there are actually any blockages in this first dungeon but I am gonna take a couple shovels uh, yeah I don't know what that I don't know what the curio interactions are either in this first dungeon I'm gonna take eight torches that might be a little overkill but I tend to over prepare I'm gonna take one key because I'm almost positive there's a locked chest um, and I really do want to conserve my money. Uh, this gold is, and I don't know how radiant mode will be, but gold is kind of the thing that, uh, it, it's been the bottleneck in a lot of other playthroughs I've done uh, of this game. So we do have one, let's see, we're going to the ruins. We might get bled. Uh, we do want to get some money and some uh, various things. I'm not great on my curio interaction, so we'll just kind of bring one of everything. We got, uh, yeah, we got one of more or less everything, so let's head on into the first dungeon in the ruins. Uh, the ruins is probably the easiest of the areas in the, uh, estate. And like I said, this, this layout's always the same, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna plow on through it. It's, uh, not, not real interesting yet. We'll get to grab a torch. A handsome reward. And well there are some new, uh, new, um, enemies uh, that will be popping up in later. Oh, man. See, this, that's one of the worst things is getting surprised and having your people shuffled because, uh, it can really, it can really screw you. Luckily, we've got fairly good damage projection from, from, uh, from where we got shuffled to, except the Plague Doctor is going to be, eh, he can still do his incision, so not too bad. And these guys are very weak as well. And now normally, this is one thing I will tell you as a tip or just something I like to do. I could smite this guy at single target and it, it would, you know, it, it would it would basically definitely kill him because I've got my hero damage down there. Uh, you can see is 8 to 15, he's only got 18, 8 health. But I almost never use the AOE attacks when you see that little uh, line connecting the two red dots underneath uh, the skill here. That's an AOE, uh, but this guy's almost dead. He's only got two HP, so it, I'll definitely kill him and get a little extra damage on that guy. So basically, if you can basically guarantee that you're gonna get a kill, then is the time to use uh, AOEs. But other than that, I vastly prefer uh, straight line damage. Uh, our Crusader's probably the best uh, you know what? Actually, it's less move resist. There's no enemies that move me here, but just to just to be thorough, I'm gonna put it on my highway man because if he got moved, it's not the end of the world. He he can do damage from any position basically. Um, but we'll just go ahead and add that speed trinket to him, and we'll reset to our default party order and continue marching along. Such blockages are unsurprising. Even the Stone seems bent on preventing uh, passage. That's the blockages are unsurprising. Dialogue must come from a different dungeon. All right, now we've surprised them. That's fine. Uh, let's see. And so this is what I was talking about. These guys can do damage, but I, I first of all, I don't want to split my damage and like do a little damage here, and a little damage there, and a little damage there. I want to focus down targets individually because I'm trying to minimize the amount of attack, attacks total that their whole party will get on me. This is the stress damage dealer, and like I said before, I do not want uh, stress. They're always a priority, Any anybody that can do uh, stress. So we're gonna stack on a blight to the uh, stress damager, and she's got one. Uh, she's got five HP. This'll do four to her at the beginning of next round, but I wanna go ahead and kill her, so I'm gonna use my little, uh, this may stun her as well, but I really just wanna do the damage so that the blight can finish her off at the beginning of her next round. And then we'll, and then, so she's dead, so I can quit worrying about her because the blight will tick and kill her. So I want to focus on this guy because he can actually do a lot more damage than this guy. So we're gonna, he's the next greatest threat. So actually, you know what, we are gonna, we're probably gonna, eh, he's got a, we're still in a surprise round, but I'm gonna stun him anyways. 
uh, because I don't want him to act and get get damage in on us. Stunning is is awesome. It's a very powerful, uh, very powerful tool in your arsenal in the Dacus dungeon. Well, one thing I've been thinking about, and like I said again, I I want to focus this guy down. He's already got a little damage on him, and he's the most uh, he's the greatest threat. So we're gonna focus him instead of splitting our our damage up. And this will definitely kill. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. One thing I'm thinking about doing, and I guess we could try and stun this guy. I'm thinking about figuring out what kinds of parties I want to take into the darkest dungeon. Um, and just building, just building uh, with with that in mind, with those kind of characters in mind from the very beginning. Uh, but I may also just kind of, you know, just play it freeform. Alright, empty room. Now, I think I, I think I know from experience that I, I'm fairly certain that one of these is a treasure room and one of them is a curio room. I can't remember which is which, but I'm gonna probably end up going to both of them, so we'll just go to the top one first. And I don't mind if my torch light gets a little bit low. Um, it is, it 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 uh, it does have some effects. Uh, stress being uh, increased stress from low. So that, this is kleptomaniac. I did not tell him to loot that pack. And Before. see how this is all grayed out. I can't grab any of it. It's because Rena Renald is uh, is a klepto, and he steals your stuff sometimes, and that that robs you of loot. Which uh, obviously is not good. I like to do I like to do highlight uh, runs unless I need a lot of money. Uh, you can do low light runs and do crit builds and different things, but for now I think we're just going to keep it simple again. Uh, target the stress damage dealer and give her a pistol shot there, and we'll also give her a play grenade. This is basically going just like the last fight. Uh, she's four damage. She's got seven left, so we need to do three to her. Hopefully the stun will do three. It does exactly, so she's dead. Because the blight the will uh, take of four health off of her next time. Uh, now both of these guys are, are pretty high damage. Uh, this guy has higher um, health, but this guy has protection. Uh, and this guy has a higher speed, so he's going to be all going first a lot. Or before us sometimes. So I think I'm going to prioritize him uh, as far as who to kill next. The slow death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Good dodge. Um, I find that dodge is kind of, it's pretty good early game, but as you get later and later, you know, the, the people just get, the uh, the enemies get so, such high accuracy that it's very, uh, now you can't, uh, it's very difficult to dodge, so it's not worth investing in. Uh, these skeletons basically have no blood, so you can see that 200% bleed resist, so that's that's not going to do me much good as far as the dot goes. Uh, but he can be blighted, uh, because he's only got 10% blight resist, so... One thing, uh, always keep in mind is to, you know, what area am I going into and what kind of, uh, dots will be effective there, for example, in the ruins. I wouldn't build a heavy bleed team because you can't you can't bleed half the skeletons uh, or half the enemies, which will be skeletons. Uh, conversely, in in like the Wield or the Warrens, there are a lot of things that are immune to blight, so I wouldn't want to bring a blight heavy team. Uh, I use the key on that, and it it gives us extra uh, gold. We could have just opened it without the key, but it wouldn't have been as much loot. And trap, that's not great, but uh, hopefully we'll get a scout here. Bump up my torchlight a little bit, no scout. Uh, I, I'm doing fine, and I know that the rest of this dungeon is not very hard, so I'm going to go ahead and explore the whole thing, even though my goal is only to explore 90% of rooms. Uh, not, really, not really a big deal. To go down here and see if we can get some extra loot. I believe there's a battle in here. Yeah, but it's easy. Uh, okay, this is a... Man, I'm getting surprised a lot. I don't recall getting uh, surprised that much. Now, these guys can all do quite a bit of damage. Uh, and poor Renaud back here is going to have to move up. So I could move this guy back, but then that's going to put my Vestal in the front. And nah, I don't want to do any of that. 
So we'll just go ahead and try and focus down. Uh, we'll just try and focus down one of these guys. I'd say that the Arbalist is probably a higher uh, target priority just because he can uh, he can project damage to these back rows. But right now my tanks or my the guys that aren't so squishy are back there. Um, and I don't have uh, as many attacks that can hit this this uh, third position right now because of the shuffle. Uh, I am going to move her back. So don't don't really need any healing right now. I mean, Dismas could use a little, but not really not really too terrible. But we need to get Renaud up. Uh, but he can actually now see here again. The the single target is higher, but I believe that Zealous will definitely kill this guy because the minimum it can do is three, and he's only got three left. There we go. Uh, but we do have a corpse here now, and corpses are kind of annoying. Uh, I think I am going to go ahead and just do a party heal. Maybe we'll get a crit and heal some stress as well. No such luck. Um, all right. Now, this is kind of annoying because I can't hit the I can't hit the guy that's almost dead that I want to hit, so I'm going to have to split my damage and start going for this Arbalist, but we got a crit, which is nice. Gives us a little stress healing every time you get a crit. Obviously, you get a stress heal. Um, and this guy can go ahead and take out that is broken. bone Maintain slasher, whatever. Offensive. But yeah, the, 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 the corpses make it so that you can't... Uh, you basic let's see what are their they have seven health okay we can take out one of these so this guy's in the third position which I cannot hit with my crusader who's actually doing quite a bit of damage right now uh, compared to the rest of my party so I want to get you know this guy into the position that I can hit which is one of these two the corpses are blocking that right now so I gotta kill one of them he'll shuffle forward and now I can hit him with uh, Renaud Ren I don't I I always want to say Renaud or Ren or do like a super accent and be like Renaud Renaud and this ma uh, but incidentally success so uh, Renaud Ren 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 Renaud and Desmus the being the original characters that you get um, you get a special achievement if you make it to the uh, beat the darkest dungeon and they are still alive I think I have no idea what this curio does I could look it up but I'm not going to I'm pretty sure I mean it says holy fountain it's possible that it either cures stress or rids you of a uh, disease or, or a quirk I really want to get rid of this quirk so I'm actually going to do it with Renaud just on the off chance. I think holy water is what we use here. Oh, it healed. Well, that's okay. All right. So in the future, I should make a note. Probably not worth it going to, to that room right there just to just to get a little healing. Uh, but the the curios, which is are those things in the uh, background, like that statue and like the various bags that you come across are called curios. And they do have... Um, Oh, it's more klepto. I've got to get rid of that. If he gets, if he gets klepto locked in on this, uh, if he gets it locked in after this mission, uh, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm gonna dis. I'm gonna dismiss Renald. All right, hunger tile. And I wonder why they they so quickly they were like, okay, no, no, in radiant mode, I'm gonna continue adventuring just to see if I can get some more loot with uh, another battle here. They were like, oh, we're not going to do hunger checks anymore. And then just almost immediately they added it back in. I guess there was an outcry uh, that, you know, that makes it that makes it too easy. And, you know, it's Darkest Dungeon is supposed to be supposed to be difficult. Uh, all right. Well, last room battle. As the light gains purchase. Spirits are lifted. And I believe that they gave this this particular enemy a, a new moveset. I think he can guard now or something, but... Uh, this guy is certainly the, he's a stress dealer, he is our, our biggest, uh, target for damage right now, but, uh, the Plague Doctor is great, he can do, uh, great backline damage with his Plague Grenade, uh, luckily it did stick on the target that we wanted it to stick on, uh, do a pistol shot on him, he dodged, that sucks, uh, we're also gonna try and stun him, just cause I do not want that stress, uh, that will mean we'll be taking a little bit, uh, more damage than maybe we want to, but that's okay. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a stun on this guy because he can do quite a bit of damage. 
Uh, but I was talking about curing the uh, kleptomaniac effect on Renald, and um, you can do that in the sanitarium, obviously, but it's very expensive. And until until heroes get up, you know, high level, I, I I don't like to try and lock in quirks or remove quirks on them just because. Um, it's just so expensive, and you don't know if you're investing in somebody that's going to die or you're going to end up, you know, not wanting. All right, I could kill him here with a definite four damage. I could also look at Grape Shot Blast, which I almost never use. Eh, uh, it... Okay, actually, this guy's dead with the uh, Blight he's already got on him, so I'm not going to do that, and we're going to start targeting... This guy might be a priority, but... Since my Crusader can't hit back here, we're going to target this guy first just to get him out of the way. Oh, and one shot him with a crit. That's great. Uh, Dismas needs a little bit of healing if our Vestal can ever get a turn. Uh, we're going to blight this guy. And I really, when I, when I first started playing it, I, I really hated dots, uh, dot damage. Because I thought, okay, the Plague Doctor can do four damage per round to somebody. That's great, but his, like, his incision will do, you know, sometimes like eight or nine damage. And why wouldn't I just always use that? Because then that's eight or nine damage per round if I always use that versus four. But, you know, the four, the dot damage obviously sticks around. Uh, so this will, this might, the... Zealous is probably going to be enough to get him within range. Uh, it would have to do minimum damage to not. Nah, it's fine. Um, I don't know if that all makes sense, but it is, sometimes b dots don't make a whole lot of sense to me because I'm like, well, you could just do more damage. Um, but, you know, you stack the dots and they, they really can add up over time. Slowly. And, uh... Gently. This they're 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 better than I originally gave them credit for because I was just like, you know, straight damage is all that ever matters. Uh, we don't need to heal because we're getting ready to get out of the dungeon. However, I am going to do a party heal because that gives her four chances to crit, and crits reduce stress. So if you're ever seeking to, uh, you know, reduce stress, the the divine comfort uh, gives you a. a extra chances to get crits and reduce stress via that. Uh, he's dead, but I can just kill him anyways. Alright, so that's dungeon totally cleared. Uh, I don't have another key. I think I can use a shovel and break this open? No, I can't. Okay. We'll just, we'll just get it. We'll just get the normal way. A few more heirlooms, that's great. And we'll return to town! See what kind of uh, horrible, uh, what kind of trinket we got, first of all. Uh, debuff skill chance, meh, that's pretty garbage. Uh, also, anything that reduces your speed, I, I really hate. Uh, I think speed is speed is and accuracy are very, very important. Um, but we got a fair amount of gold and a fair amount of uh, heirlooms. Everybody got uh, some quirks. Plus 20 stress. Uh, I tend to go bright, so that's not hugely terrible. Uh, scouting chance in the ruins, that's that's good, I love scout. Uh, move resist, that's no, nothing, that doesn't matter to me. Ooh, I, I love warrior of light. In fact, I will lock that in sometimes. Uh, only one negative quirk and it's not that bad. Um, but yeah, I like to use sun rings and things like that, so any any quirks that also go in with, truth, um... I cannot tell how much time has passed since I Any quirks that, that go with, uh, high light runs. I, I tend to, to like. Uh, so here we have the Abbey, obviously, that's the for stress relief. I could put some of these guys in here, straight. but they're really relatively low the stress, Abbey and I don't want to spend money on them uh, yet. The bar, uh, or the Fresh tavern, cans, also cards, reduces stress. But this is the main thing we want, weary and, and we always take Vestals, and Man at Arms are very good as well. I should be checking. I'm going to take all three of these guys. I, know, I really don't care about the leper, but I do want to be able to make a. Uh, I do want to be able to make an entire party. Um, I do need to increase my bear. Uh, these are the two things that I basically always level up first uh, until they get unreasonable. But we're going to be deed starved. 
uh, in the mud. In the early rain. game, we're very often uh, deed starved. Why can't I click on? Oh, I haven't, I haven't unlocked the guild or the black. You got to do two missions, I guess, to to get the guild or the blacksmith. Um, but anyways, uh, all right. Well, that's the first episode of Darkest Dungeon. I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, enjoy this game as much as I do. Thanks for watching. My name's Rantry, and I'll see you next time.